So you've seen me dabble a lot with Stable Diffusion recently, and I still like it, it's kind of fun to play with it, and to poke around and play a bit with its architecture, with the prompts and how you can hack the whole process. So of course, at some point this had to be done, let's connect Stable Diffusion with Houdini. And as always, there are multiple ways of doing this. For example, I could try to convince Houdini to load Hugging Faces Diffuser library and implement a Stable Diffusion workflow just in a Python node inside of Houdini. And that would definitely be the solid and intelligent way. But if you know me, you know, I prefer other ways of doing that, the lazy way. And luckily for me, the lazy way is very much feasible now, thanks to Automatic 11.11's amazing web UI, which we'll be using here. And we will be using its API to remotely control it from inside Houdini with a few lines of code, and then just have it hand over the data it generates into Houdini. To do so, we need to have Automatic 11.11's web UI installed, which I have here. And in order to get access to the API features, what you need to do is, for example, in the web UI user.bat, if you right click on that, go to show more options and then edit this thing. Under the set command line arcs, you can add command line parameters. Here with the dash dash xformers, I'm loading xformers, which makes the inference of images a good bit faster. And to enable the API access, I would add dash dash API, then save this and execute it. And I did exactly that, just renamed the file to web UI user minus API down here. And after starting that and being greeted with this line here, I can fire up my browser and just enter this address up here. And as always, I'm greeted with Automatic 11.11's Stable Diffusion Web UI. So nothing new so far. However, if up here you add a slash and type docs, you are gonna get the quote unquote documentation for the API. And documentation in this case means not a properly fleshed out help file, but rather this. But no worries, we'll go through what this means in a second. So if I wanna control the web UI from within Houdini and bring back its images, I could feel tempted as they are images to use Houdini's built-in IMG context, which also is called COPS. And again, that would be the intelligent quote unquote proper way. However, you know me, there's another way, the lazy way. Because COPS is arcane, a bit old, and for me, really difficult to wrap my head around at times. I will rather build this in SOPS, which I know my ways around and which to me seems quite a bit easier. So within SOPS, I'll just drop down a geo container, call this, I don't know, SD text to image and dive in here. Now, in order to work with and represent a 2D image, I could either resort to the old trick of using a plane and storing the individual pixels as points in that plane, or I could use a volume, a 2D volume that is, which is exactly what Houdini offers within the volume SOP. That is the old school Houdini volumes, not the newer VDBs. And in here, I can set up a vector volume and call this capital CD for color diffuse, size of one by one. And down here I can check so that it's two dimensional. X, Y plane is fine. And if I scroll down here, I can set its sampling resolution. And under the uniform sampling divisions, I will set this to be 512 by 512 voxels. And as it's only 2D, you could also call them pixels at this point. All right, next, let's drop down a Python node attach this down here. And the first thing I wanna do in here is import a bunch of libraries, which we're gonna need. So I'll be importing the array library. I'll be importing the JSON library. I'll be importing requests. I'll import IO. I'll import base64. And from pill, the Python image library, I will import image. And finally, I'll import numpy as NP. You gotta love Python. Next, what I wanna write is a small function that allows me to write out image data into this volume that we are feeding into this Python node here. So a function in Python is defined using the def statement. Let's call this thing image to vol, image to volume. And I want this to have as arguments the image, which I want to write into a volume. And as an image contains three channels and my color volume has three individual volumes, X, Y, and Z, or R, G, and B, I need this function to know these three individual channels. So let's call them V0 for volume zero, V1, and V2 for all those three channels. And finally, just for good measure, I want to be able to flip the resulting image. So in here, I'll also include a parameter called do flip. And by default, I wanna set this to false colon and now onto the next line and let's indent that. So as an image input here, the first thing I wanna do is convert my input image here into a numpy array of type float. So a list of float values. Let's call this thing np array, numpy array, npr, and fill it using the numpy as array function. Fill it with the data that's coming in through our image that we pass into this function. And let's make sure that the data type is set to be float 
that is np dot float 32 32 bit float float not float next i want to flip this so i check if my do flip is true and if it is let's just take the numpy array that stored my image and use the np dot flip function and flip the numpy array and I could leave it like that and the image would be flipped on both axes which is what I want in this case however I ran into some errors when implementing it like this so I will separately flip the x and y axis by setting the axis first to zero and then just copying the thing and in the next line doing the same thing for the second axis like this now to write out this image into volumes I want to split it up into its red green and blue channel and I know that the image that I will pass in here will have values between 0 and 255 your standard RGB values however my Houdini volume expects my RGB values to be in the 0 to 1 range so we'll have to remap them as well we can do both the splitting into channels and the remapping of the values with one line by defining the image red image green and image blue channels and using the np.split function split not spit to split the incoming numpy array which we divide by 255 and we will split this into three chunks along the z-axis that is this one here so the numpy array store the red green and blue channel along the z-axis and that's where we want to split it into three parts and store the resulting splits into those three variables here okay finally let's write this out in this case we could either spell out the copying of the data into the houdini channels the individual volumes line after line or we could write a short for loop which i'll do iterating through both the image channels and the volumes and we're going to use the zip function to tell the for loop that we want to iterate through both of those sequentially and at the same time so it's writing through image red image green and image blue as well as volume zero volume one and volume two and for each of those arrays i want to take their values and convert them into a string of bytes which i can do by specifying a variable let's call it out bytes and let's use the array libraries array function and unravel the respective channel and convert it to bytes like this let's check okay no error so far and finally let's write out those bytes into volume using houdini python's volume dot set all voxels from string and we pass this byte string called out bytes okay so far everything working so that should be it again this function takes in an image through a bunch of conversions splits it up into its individual red green and blue channels makes sure the channel values are in the 0 to 1 range, converts that into a string of bytes, which are then used to write out those individual channels into their respective volumes in Houdini here. Now, let's work on the main part of our program. So first, I want to specify those three volumes for the red, green, and blue channels. So let's also call them v0 to v2. And in my case, I'll specify them using the geo.primid, where I can just set them using their primitive number so zero to two let's just copy and paste this two times like this and call this v1 and v2 respectively and load into primitives one and two as well now let's look up the volumes resolution again as they are the same channels of one volume they all have the same resolution 512 by 512 in our case so let's specify the volume resolution and let's just take v0 it wouldn't matter in this case which one of those volumes that look up and use the resolution function to get the resolution this will return this first volumes resolution as a vector so 512 512 and 1 this is the content of this volres variable here and in my case i'm only interested in the x and y dimensions which for a square volume are the same so what i'll do is let's call this thing res and just only look up the first component of our volume dimension 512. now we are at a point where we can call the web ui using web ui's api and this guide which lives in the automatic 1111 stable diffusion web ui wiki helps a lot it's got a bit of example code in here and this is very much what we're going to follow so the first thing we're going to specify is the address where our server lives so that's this url 
Then we're going to specify a payload that is a list containing all the parameters that we could pass into web UI to generate an image. And then we will read out the response and from this extract an image. So let's do this sequentially. The first thing again is specifying the URL, which I just copied, which is the default URL the web UI server is running at. And then let's specify a variable containing a prompt and a negative prompt. So let's call this thing prompt and it will contain a string. Let's prompt for a cute dog. Also, let's add a negative prompt, call this neg prompt. And let's not have something mangled, cheap, childish, or ugly. Also, up here, I'd like to break that out because it's a rather important parameter. Let's specify the seed. And let's set it to something really, really exciting, 2223334444, whatever you like. And then let's specify our payload. Again, this is the giant variable containing all the parameters that I'll pass in here. And all of those available parameters, again, can be found here in the automatic 11.11 docs, available just by going through your normal automatic 11.11 web UI's address and then appending slash docs. And then I'll scroll down here and I'm interested in the Stable Diffusion API version one text to image here. And you can see there are a few parameters. You don't have to fill all of them. If you don't fill them, they will be automatically filled with their default value. I will definitely fill the prompt. I will also fill the negative prompt. I will definitely adjust the steps, the CFG scale, the width and height, and the sampler index. So I'm able to choose my sampler. Let's do that. So the first thing I want to specify is the prompt. Specify it like this. So I have that already here in my prompt variable. Then I'll specify my negative prompt. Then my seed. Again, pack that up here into this variable. Then my number of steps. So the iterations I'll run to infer this. In here, let's use 20 steps maybe. Then the CFG scale. So how strongly stable diffusion should adhere to my prompt. Let's start with a default of seven. Now for the width and height, let's use this res here. So if we change the volume resolution up here, everything else downstream gets changed as well. So same thing for the height. And finally, let's adjust the sampler underscore index. And in our case, let's not use the standard Euler A, which is the default here, but let's just Google for web UI samplers. And up here I can find a list and I really like this one, the DPM2A Keras. So let's just copy that one and paste it as a string down here like so. And that should be it for my payload. Now to trigger web UI and to remotely tell it to start, let's first define a variable into which we will receive the data that web UI will generate. And let's use the requests library, the post function, and then this needs the URL specified like this and in here we're going to start with this url up here so let's put it like that and then in order to be able to call this function here we'll have to give it this path so forward slash sdap v1 text to image so let's do that forward slash sdapi forward slash v1 forward slash text to img and finally let's pass the payload onto it so this list here of parameters to generate our image. Let's try that. And by now, if I open up my command window, we can see that web UI starts generating something. It doesn't output anything because we do not write back the data into a Houdini volume yet. So let's take care of that by down here, extracting our image by first extracting the responses JSON and then opening up the image using the pill image libraries image dot open function. And in this case, the returned image is again a byte string. So we can use a bit of a convoluted call. And I basically just stole this from the API documentation and modified it a bit, but it's basically this line here. So let's use the IO dot bytes IO. And let's in here use the base 64 dot B64 to code. And in here, we want to finally decode the data that comes in through our response JSON that's labeled as images. And this could be a list of images. For example, if you had a batch of images generated by web UI. However, in this case, I just want to grab the first one, 
we say index zero, that should be it. So now this image gets converted, should be converted into an image, which you can then pass to our image to volume function that we wrote up here. So let's finally do that and call our img to vol function and pass it on the image, then our three volumes. And finally, let's set our flipping, our mirroring of the image to true. And after a bit of thinking, I can see I've got something here. Let's try and make this a bit more visible by hitting space and three to go to the front viewport, hitting D over the viewport and on the background, check dark background, and maybe disabling the grid display here. And that looks pretty black and white and not RGB to me. So in order to make this visible within the viewport, what I like to do is use a volume visualization node, wire this in here and under the volume visualization let's just drag down the parameters here let's disable the density field and set the density to be one everywhere and instead as a diffuse field let's take all the cd channels up here and now you can see we've got this image of a dog the colors seem to be a bit off that is because of my color management having ocio enabled in here but what i seriously want to do is bring this finally into cops to be able to work with it so let's drop down a cop net next to this thing and maybe add a null to our volume visualization like this and call this one out. And finally into our cop net, let's use a sop import in here, point this to our out null we have. Make sure you have this sop import selected and click on set resolution from sop and set planes from sop. And then let's head over to our composite view and you can see we have our image in our 2D compositing environment as well. And down here, let's disable the ACES sRGB mapper and instead display raw data. And that looks a bit more plausible. So that is how I would duct tape stable diffusion to Houdini, again, just choosing the very lazy route of quote unquote, just using Stable Diffusion's API. 